Is it recording? <laughs> hey YouTube, welcome back. I'm Jose. This is Mario. We're the Espinosa Urban Farm. Um, what do we got going on today? We've got our garden tour, our first fall garden tour. We're super excited to show you guys what we have growing. Um, but before we get into the video, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. So many of our views come from people that are not subscribed. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't ever miss a video and give the video a thumbs up if you, if you enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So today fall garden tour. Yes. We waited until we really had stuff going. We didn't want to just show you guys a bunch of seedlings. Um, so I know it's been a few weeks since we've really shown you the garden. It's taken a lot for me to not like show little clips on Instagram. Yeah. Um, well, and we ha I think we had a little bit of struggles, but we also had some pretty big wins. And uh, yeah. we'll go over those as we go through the tour. Yeah, so we're just gonna hop right into it. Oh, and by the way, we do have some news. So stick around to the end of the video. We'll announce some stuff. All right. All right. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna get started with the stepchild bag. Again, my name. Um, so in this, on this, in this raised bed, we have a lot of root crop. We have the turnips. As you can see, these are the back two rows. They're doing pretty awesome. Um, and then we have uh, beetroot. Next two rows. And then you're gonna see these uh, other two empty rows. <laughs> is our carrot row um they're not doing as fabulous as we would want them to to do there's some <laughs> but we we'll have show the good some. ones <laughs> but you know what we're gonna come back in succession sow some more and see if we have more coming up so i'm okay with it um but it's one of our least productive uh root crops right now and then we have the radishes radishes always do pretty good but i i'm gonna tell you a problem that we're having with them and we just found out part of the root cause maybe is we've been having problems um, with the actual root right so the radish developing so we get a lot of these beautiful greens but we don't develop a nice big radish and I think it's because we've been feeding them um, we fed the last um, crop we had a lot and rarely did we have a good developed radish and I think that's why this one we did feed it in the very beginning as they were getting started, but I stopped feeding it and we're, we'll see if that produces any different changes or succession for us. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's the uh, stepchild, Beth. We'll show you one of our little standouts here. This is our first time growing turnips. Yes. And look, we're so excited. It's one of our first turnip babies. And you can see, I mean, there's another little white bulb there. There's another one over there. Yeah. We're doing pretty good. So, so far this bed is a success. All right, guys, we're back at the OG bed. If you want to come over here, we've got a couple different things growing in the front. We've got our bok choy and bok choy, and you can see they're finally starting to look like actual bok choy, which is super exciting. Um, we've also got a row of Swiss chard here. And then after that, we've got celery, which we just transplanted the other day. Underneath the giant eggplant leaves. Look at these leaves, guys. Underneath these giant eggplant leaves are um, mustard greens. So we've got a whole row of mustard greens tucked under here. And then these are my current pride and joy, my eggplant. This one's a Rosa Bianca. Um, they're all doing really nicely. I'm super excited. They've got some blossoms. Some of the blossoms have been dropping, um, which I researched could be lack of water, which we did have a watering problem in this bed last week. Um, it could also be that they need food. So I am gonna feed them um, food this week, not any high nitrogen. We're gonna do phosphorus and potass potassium, right? Right. And um, hopefully that'll help with the fruit development. And then behind those, we have some snow peas trellising up here. You can see them in the back, they're all across the back. And then over in this corner, we have a volunteer cow pee. This guy's just hanging out, doing his thing. I haven't taken him out. Maybe I will eventually, but he's bringing nitrogen into the soil, so we're gonna leave him. So the watering problem was me. I actually <laughs> accidentally shut off the valve and forgot to turn it back on. All right, guys, so we're in the corner bed on this side here. We've got three varieties of Salanova lettuce. Look at these cute little lettuce heads that are growing. 
I love these guys. In the middle row, we have kohlrabi. And in the back row right now, we have sugar pod peas that I am trying to trellis up. This bed's a little bit slower growing. It's in a shadier part of the yard, especially that back corner. So those peas are struggling a little bit, but hopefully as the light shifts throughout the season, um, everything here will grow and thrive. So far they're doing good. They're just a little bit slower. Okay, on this row, we have all our kale on this first row right here. Um, if you open kale, this mm -hmm. is our, uh, what do you call this one, honey? Oh, this is our kale. Uh, our dazzling blue. blue. Dazzling blue. Yep. And then right over here, we got our vase kale. This is arugula. Arugula is doing pretty good. And I planted some random chard here. Um, this is chard, some kohlrabi. kohlrabi. Yeah. Look, you can see it's starting to look like a little kohlrabi there. <laughs> look at that little ball. That is so exciting. Oh my gosh. And then this is a random mustard kohlrabi. We have some more arugula. This came from seed. The rest of this stuff was starts. This is seed right here. This is mustard. And that is another mustard that we st that was a start. Doing pretty good. I'm happy with this row. Yeah, so we're doing some succession, not necessarily on purpose, but because not all of the seeds we started inside did well um, or germinated or when we moved them outside, they didn't take very well. So we reseeded directly. Um, so that's like some automatic succession for us, which we're totally happy about. And now I want to look at these kohlrabi over here real quick and see if any of them are getting their little ball. Yeah, right over here. Look at this. Right here. Oh yeah, that one's getting the little ball. And some of these are purple. You can see the purple. <gasps> I'm so excited. We've never grown kohlrabi. A lot of this we've never grown. So that's super exciting. Yeah, and you know what? I'm really happy with the succession uh, plan that developed. That way, you know, we have more harvesting mm -hmm. time. Yep, for Here. sure. All right. This would be Justin Rhodes' favorite part of the garden. <laughs> this is our cabbage patch. All of our little cabbage patch kids, I call them. We also have some other brassicas, um, broccoli varieties, um, a cauliflower down there, but mostly it's cabbage. We also have some Brussels, some red rubine Brussels, which are super pretty plants. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. All of these are our hybrid cabbages. Um, they shape, they're kind of like cone shaped. They're a faster growing variety. They're supposed to be nice and sweet. So I'm excited about that. Over here, we have broccoli. These are early purple broccoli. We have, do we have two broccoli growing right here? Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, those are two. There's two plants there. And then we also have over here, I think a couple more Brussels sprouts. And then I tucked a ca an extra cauliflower in the corner there. This gets a lot of shade over here yeah. and that's why you see those having too much. That was about the size of all these starts when we put them in. We put them in pretty early because we wanted yeah. to get a head start. They were teeny tiny. I wanted to give you guys a quick update. Um, this right here is our dwarf mulberry. Um, it's in a pot, which is unusual for us, but we just don't have like tons of space for fruit trees or fruiting plants. So I did do it in the pot. You can see it's got some good fungus going on here. It's finally starting to take off. So hopefully next season we'll have some mulberries. Hi right, guys, our little cabbage patch area here. Um, this is our red cabbage. Yep. Okay, and then we have the eggplant. These are all doing great. So far, so good. <laughs> Please with this. Um, also, I don't know if you want to go over this day, but this. Yes. These are finally giving us something to be proud of. Yeah. So these are our Ruby Moon Hyacinth beans. Um, beans have been kind of a struggle for us because they attract a lot of aphids. And for a long time, I was trying to like really control that and keep the aphids down and it was very stressful. And you know, I listened to Jose this time and just let them go, just let the aphids do their thing. And then eventually we got ladybugs that started showing up and the plant started flowering. Now we've got pods growing up here. Look at you can even see the little 
beans that are gonna start sprouting in there. They're gonna start filling out. So I would say that, that everywhere. this plant is like one of my greatest lessons so far is kind of, if you build the right environment, you can just let things be and let nature figure it out and take care of it. We did have pests, but then the beneficial insects came in. The plant was healthy enough because we've created a healthy enough environment. It was strong enough to like withstand the pest pressure and still flower and produce. So that's a big lesson learned for me personally. And the flowers are so beautiful. They are, they're, they're gorgeous. I mean, you could still see there's aphids all over this thing, but yeah. it's still producing and it's still a healthy plant because it's strong enough. But they're not everywhere. Right. They're doing good. This here is our other little cabbage patch area or with our red cabbage. We got three cabbages and these are doing awesome. <laughs> awesome. This is my baby. I haven't named him yet, but I should. Um, I picked a ton of peppers off of this. We ate them. They're delicious, a little bit spicy, but not too spicy. And now the plant is just covered in fruit again. And if you come in close, you can see that they're starting to ripen on the plant, which is really exciting. Um, so they're getting some heat. Yeah, you see those in there. Oh, look, here's some red ones, babe. Yeah, I'm looking at them. So we've got some full red ones and they'll start to turn a deep purple as they get like to their maximum spice level. So this is still my pride and joy plant here. got some bok choy down here. Yep, we've got some purple pak choy, two of bok those, choy. a Swiss chard, another Swiss chard, and another one here. Um, this will go back on top of the green stalk once I move this pepper plant. We're gonna transplant this into the ground into a permanent home, overwinter it outside, and keep it growing for as many years as possible. Awesome. This um, herb garden back here is doing really well. Um, we've got our oregano, a bunch of basil, mint, thyme, a little bit of dill, and everything's pretty much thriving except for um, our lemon balm, which we showed you guys before. We're not really sure what we're gonna do with that. We're just kind of letting it go for right now and we'll see what happens. You remember we were struggling when it was a little baby Look about thick it's that now. big. Now the problem is trying to cap it at the top. It just keeps growing. We are um, supposed to top it off. Yeah, I actually top. It'll keep growing. Yeah, I topped the, the top of it already, but you see the branches on the side. What do you call those? The the little offshoots. The offshoots. They just keep growing and they keep going up. So I, I got to start capping some of the offshoots. Look at how big this one is right here. So it's doing great. And Nicole is doing something we do. It's like a daily thing for us. We come back here and we just snack on it. Getting your vitamins has a really just like green taste to it. Very mild. But this is a, a miracle veggie for us. So highly recommend. You can also dehydrate this, crush it up, grind it into a powder. People pay a lot of money for this. Really good plant to grow if you're in a hot area for sure. Oh, and the green stalk here. Look, we have strawberries sending off, what are their shoots called? They're called something, but it's basically sending off side runners. shoots. Runners. These will root down here into the soil and then you'll be able to snip that off and this will be a whole new strawberry plant. So that is the plan with our strawberry plants that survived is to let them throw off their runners, get them into soil and get more strawberry plants out of them. Yeah, and very happy with them. Um, the temperature finally started falling and big difference, big, mm -hmm. big difference. Down in the bottom, I did plant some uh, leftover cauliflower, some extra cauliflower seedlings that I had started. Up top, we have a bunch of basil. So up here, we've got a lot of nice basil growing. And then the empty spaces, we're gonna fill with seedlings that I had started a couple weeks ago inside. More greens, kale, um, I, I don't think I did lettuce, a bunch of different kale varieties. We really like to eat a lot of greens. Guys, big <laughs> lesson learned on the strawberries for sure is we put them out way too early, it was way too hot. Mm -hmm. Now that the temperature dropped, they're doing fantastic. So 
yeah keep an eye on that temperature when you start putting those outside and we were warned not to do it until the temperature dropped below 85. But we were but, impatient yeah we we're a little impatient and they were also dying inside where we had them so we had to do something i do have um 10 strawberry plugs coming not bare roots we went with plugs um a friend of mine on instagram she um, sent me over the link gave me this really great resource um they're based out of texas the plants they grow are heat tolerant varieties that georgia peach i will link her instagram and i will link the website below that way you guys can check those out but we got 10 sweet charlie strawberry plugs coming in all right over here guys we have jose's tomato starts these will go out in the garden soon enough these are our pepper starts these are all going to be for our permanent pepper garden that we're working on this bag over here we've got some arugula greens and some more snow peas that we just had extras of that we started so we figure why waste them let's just put them where we have space and see how they do back here are all of my cucumber plants i've got two varieties i've got black it i've got what is it pepper salt and pepper and lemon um they're all flowering got a bunch of little yellow flowers through here they're doing nicely no no baby cucumbers yet i've been looking um, but they should start producing really soon and then over in that corner we have red malabar spinach um, which is just a really pretty plant we haven't harvested from it yet but i just think these are so beautiful it's just climbing up making leaves eventually we'll we'll eat some but right now it's just super pretty oh there's a baby cucumber right there <laughs> see that little fuzzy chunker no where yeah right there oh well, that one yes i see that. that's a baby cucumber that one there <laughs> that is so exciting now i'm like oh do i have more i think that's a baby lemon cucumber right there but i'm not sure it's super tiny okay let's let's keep oh moving though. let's keep moving that's so exciting i get so excited when i see actual fruit here we have the eggplants that we have these are the black beauties um they're coming along they have develop some buds and we'll see what happens you can see that right there um initially this one had some buds but they fell off but we're gonna do what nicole mentioned earlier and try to give them some more um blossom feed and some more water um you see here these are our sweet potatoes look at them taking off so they're doing pretty good pretty happy we'll see in about what a couple months month and a half or so how they're doing um they've been in the ground for quite a bit uh, but i think they need you know several weeks so here's another black beauty here doing great um same thing with this one hasn't had any blossoms yet um here's one of our tomatoes that's been out here for a bit I hanging out cucumber. that one's been hanging out and nicole's been looking for cucumbers since she saw one i found one. another baby cucumber i also found a caterpillar and i squished it but i found a baby cucumber <laughs> all right so the last thing back here is our green stock the original green stock i just harvested a bunch of the salanova lettuce last night we have some basil that i harvested last night made pesto collard greens mustard um more collard greens some bok choy and then the empty space is in here I uh, had some bush beans. They got a little bit diseased. Um, there was just a ton of rain and moisture, so they got diseased. Took those out, and we're going to use the rest of my starts for this green stock as well. So the starts will go in both of the green stocks. Let's fill them up. All right, so the very last part of the gardens we want to show you is actually in the front yard. It is our squash area, our squash garden. Um, you can see there's some remnants of a flower here. I was out here impregnating squash again this morning. Um, I've got a couple different varieties. I've got some winter squash and some summer squash. You can see right down here, this is one of our winter squash varieties. This is the one that I pollinated this morning. Um, this one will vine along the ground and it should root down in as it's vining. All through here earlier this week, I planted a bunch more. I don't exactly know which are which variety at the moment, but again, some are winter and some are summer. Over here, we have summer squash. I also interplanted 
a marigold under here. But look at that. That is our first patty pan summer squash. This is another flower that I interplanted in here. And then we've got more patty pan summer squash down here. Oh yeah, you got like three there. Mm -hmm. So I come out here each morning now and make sure that they're getting pollinated. The final ones are over here. I've got two right here. Got one back there by the basil and by the oregano. And we're really hopeful that we'll get a lot of squash. These are our nasturtiums. They should start trailing, which would be really nice. Um, but yeah, that's what we've got growing in the front yard. We originally weren't gonna plant much out here, but we just kind of naturally migrated up front. And uh, Jose is actually pretty happy with how it looks and how it turned out. So that makes me excited. Yeah, we had it planned for the future, but you know what? We had a lot of empty mulchy area that we could use. And why not? We love squash. Yeah. Um, we could always use more of it. So Nicole started on it. <laughs> she, she's impatient, uh, as she's mentioned before, which is cool. I'm yeah, glad so you did. I kind of just started with around the flagpole and that like eased him into the idea of planting out here. And then he was like, yeah, we should do that. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, is there recording? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put that footage on there. <laughs> All right guys, so that wraps up our garden tour. Yay, first fall garden tour. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I thought, I think it's come along pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot more than we were planning for because we included the front part of the garden now which is our new addition mm -hmm. awesome feel good about <laughs> that um, and I think that's something that living in a suburban or an urban area that you should always be open um, of course you want to start with a plan and start small but be open to alternate ideas I mean that space is just mulch and tree roots from the palms that are up there and I'm sure most people wouldn't plant vegetables in there but why not? It's just unused, empty, decorative space. Why not get production out of it? And that's what we're all about, yep. is using, the, using what you have, using the land and the space that you have, and finding innovative solutions and being open to doing something outside the norm. And we've been talking about the front yard, and yeah. you know what it is. <laughs> Talk about it, better quit doing it, talking about it and get to doing it, so. We also have something else for the front yard we're probably going to do. I've been looking into a cover crop for the front yard. Um, so that's an idea we're exploring right now. Um, and we will keep you guys posted on that. Why grow grass when you can grow cover crop and build your soil? Right. Oh, so the surprise. We had a surprise oh, yeah. for you guys <laughs> at the end of this video. So we wanted to announce something to you guys. And, you know, we wanted to show our appreciation for you know the subscribers that we got this last week and you guys just really helping us out with that and all the followers we have on instagram so what we came up with or what we've been talking about is we want to do a giveaway yes so we want to do a giveaway for both our instagram um, followers and our youtube subscribers um, but we're talking about that now and we're going to figure out how we're going to do that so there's more to come in the next couple of videos mm -hmm. but please stay tuned we do want to thank you guys by giving something away so yes. do you have anything more to say on that i mean we know what the giveaway is going to consist we of do. um he wants to keep it a secret <laughs> i do i do i want to keep you guys watching i have i have already shown you it on the instagram oh she's giving it away <laughs> i'm not really good at keeping secrets no. <laughs> um but that will be coming soon and stay tuned again he said like jose said we'll be doing a giveaway specifically for our instagram followers and then a separate giveaway specifically for our youtube subscribers you're more than welcome to enter both you'll just have to you know follow the rules for each one um yeah. But yeah, so that's coming soon. Other than that, uh, we got a couple things we need to finish up here today and then we can get our weekend pool time in. It's a beautiful day here in Florida. It's hot again. We're at like 86 right now. Well, so. all, I, all I can say about that is quit talking about it. <laughs> all right, so that's gonna do it for us today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell and share. 
spread us around. Get us some more, some more subscribers. Anyone that you think that might want a garden or, or farm on their little piece of property. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.